uh, today, we're going to go uh, over the Module 5, Thermochemistry Concepts. So we'll start. A basic concept of energy. Chemical reaction can, uh, can give heat, which is the heat is energy, to the surrounding during uh, the process of chemical reactions. Uh, when it's giving away its uh, uh, the heat, the reaction called to be exothermic chemical reactions. Some chemical reactions, though, they need heat. They need really heat, and uh, to, in order to to progress, or in order to carry it on. And this type of reaction, when they need heat. They, taken in by the by the chemical reaction or this by the system this reaction said to be endothermic chemical reactions so the word uh, the, I mean the, the the prefix is here exo and endo is coming from the Greek exo means outside uh, meaning outside and the endo meaning inside and the energy can be utilized uh, from um, these two types of exo or endo, two types of chemical reaction, exo or endothermic uh, changes in many applications in the industry and some other applications uh, surrounding us. Now let's look at the curves of exothermic and endothermic. There's a unique uh, difference between the exothermic curve versus the endothermic curve. First of all, let's look at the uh, reactants here in the exothermic. And the products. I'm looking at the potential energy. I'm looking at what the potential energy here. The reactants in the exothermic reaction, they really have a higher potential energy. They are at a very high. The products are very low. The products are a very low potential uh, energy. Furthermore, we have to from the reactant side. I can come here. From the reactant side, I can make a line here. And to the submit here, this is the activation energy from this is here. This is the activation energy. Uh, activation energy by definition, as you know, amount of energy needed to start the, 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 the chemical reaction. The chemical reaction will not start unless you provide the activation energy for it. So, and then we have another heat from the, uh, from the product side here here from this to the reactant side. The difference of this here, the difference between those two called heat of reaction or energy release. This amount of the energy released. This is an exothermic reaction. Amount of energy re release, or we call it heat of the reaction in an exothermic reaction. On the other hand, if you look here for the potential energy here, you will see in the endothermic reaction, the heat will be taken in the reactants at the very lower potential energy, the product at the higher potential energy, and you see the huge activation energy to be, uh, must be provided for the reaction to, uh, to start, correct, to reaction to the start, so, and the products are higher, so the, the, the difference between the, uh, I mean, the heat absorbed or the heat of the reaction here between the reactants and products is is uh, this between the product is called a heat of the reaction and is uh, smaller. But the, uh, if you look at the activation energy is huge in the in the uh, in the endothermic reaction. They need to the the, rea the those type of chemical reaction really do need to uh, to take in heat or energy from the surrounding. Correct. So you can see the difference between them. We have, we have to recognize exothermic versus endothermic uh, curves. So writing exothermic and endothermic chemical uh, rea equations or reactions, straightforward. We can use the word heat. Exothermic, the heat at the side of the product. This is the product side. Correct. And the endothermic, this exothermic. The endothermic, this is the heat here, and this side here is, this side is reactant side. So, we can, 
utilize the, the uh, chemical reactions by looking at them and inspecting them. If I have the heat at the product side, which is here, that's an exothermic. If I have the heat at the reactant side, this is uh, endothermic. Furthermore, I can replace the heat with the amount, correct? So the exothermic, instead of writing the heat, I will write what? This is the amount here. So this is like still, still what? This is still, um, this is still the product side. So still the products. So this is still um, product side. And here instead, we have here the reactant side still. And here I just put the, uh, the, uh, the, the amount, the value of the heat being absorbed in the endothermic and heat be, being released in the exothermic reaction. This is the, in the reactant side, correct? So I can write the heat first, or I can take the heat out and put the real value, heat being absorbed or heat being, being released, exothermic or endothermic. I can go further and uh, uh, recognize, I will not write the heat or the value of the heat in the, in the chemical equation. I put them aside. After the chemical reaction, I put the delta H, this, the H is enthalpy. The enthalpy difference is negative. So you see the key is negative. Negative means exothermic. So if I have an exothermic reaction, I have to put a negative uh, value uh, in front, okay? Uh, this is not meaning negative energy, but it means that the, the, the system or the chemical reaction is giving away this amount of energy when it's react. So this means given away. So negative means exothermic. So this is very good to recognize. And this is delta H, is uh, delta is change. The triangle means delta, change. Change in enthalpy is negative and exothermic. In the endothermic, in the endothermic is the same way. Instead of I can write the heat here or the value, but I can write here the same thing. The, the change in enthalpy is positive. See here, the endothermic positive change, uh, the positive value at the end of the reaction uh, equation. Here an example of applications of uh, endothermic, exothermic, we have ice pack and hot pack. Uh, ice pack or cold pack is made of, uh, here we have uh, H2O, as you can recognize. And here we have ammonium nitrate, white uh, crystals. Now, uh, the reaction is an endothermic reaction, by the way. When I uh, punch through the H2O uh, pocket here, the, the H2O will come in and will start dissolving the, uh, the, uh, the ammonium nitrate and ammonium nitrate here being dissolved and the heat will be gained and therefore the, 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 whole, the whole pack feels cold. So the, the, uh, the cold ice pack is used for uh, mostly for, to, uh, to cool down pain or injuries, as we say, to cool down pain or injuries. So, and this is just the, the, the uh, endothermic reaction. How does it work? We have ammonium nitrate solid, we have H2O liquid, we'll let them react. The reaction will not go until the system is acquiring heat from the surrounding and then start dissolving ammonium nitrate and the reaction is endothermic. And the amount of energy absorbed is 25.7 kilojoule uh, per mole. So, and this is just the three types of writing the chemical uh, equation with the endothermic uh, heat. So you can write the heat, or you can replace the heat with the amount of the value at the, pro of the reactant side, or you can just the, the enthalpy here, positive value, the positive value. So three, three ways to express the uh, endothermic chemical reaction equation. So then let's go for the hot uh, pack. Well, the hot pack instead of uh, ammonium chloride, uh, ammonium nitrate, sorry, we use calcium chloride. It's the same idea. You punch through the whole thing, uh, the H2O, 
it shall come and dissolve calcium chloride and the heat will be given off this time it's an exothermic reaction and the hot pack is used for camping in during the camping or anytime you have uh, you are going on on a trip or, or a journey or whatever uh, then you can use to heat your tent whatever uh, you have or the uh, small tiny room you want to be in so it's used to really for heating the surrounding area so and this is really what's happened here and this is three ways of writing the exothermic uh, exothermic chemical uh, equation or reactions calcium chloride is solid uh, H2O will come and dissolve it and therefore the heat is written at the uh, product side this is exothermic or you write instead the heat you write the value here instead of the heat or you can just write delta H the enthalpy change is negative that's the negative that's the key of the the value 82.8 kilojoule per mole uh, heat temperature and thermal uh, energy let's define first the heat uh, heat is a term is used to describe the transfer of thermal energy between molecules within a system. Heat measures how thermal energy flows, moves, or transfers. So the heat measures how thermal energy flows, moves, or transfers. Uh, and it is measured in a different uh, system. We have uh, English system, heat measured in the British Thermal Unit, BTU. Uh, in a metric system as calories in international system SI in joules and you will see most of the time will be uh, exchanging between the metric and international system so between uh, calories and joules between calories and joules and note this is just keep it for yourself here now for the time being and you have to memorize it that's one calorie here is 4.1844 joules one calorie again 4.184 uh, joules okay so and most of our uh, heat in our solar system is taken the heat from directly from the sun about 90 percent is our heat in our system coming from the sun temperature well the temperature is a tool to measure is a tool to measure the heat correct to, in order to measure the, the, the heat, you need a tool. We use the temperature. Here we have uh, just three systems. We might have another system called Rankine, but we are not interested in the fourth uh, system. Those are the three systems. One called the SI system uses uh, Kelvin. And the metric system using centigrade Celsius. And the English system using Fahrenheit. And the references used is H2O. The boiling point of H2O the, and, the, and then the freezing point of H2O. Here it is. So, in the Fahrenheit system, the, the boiling point of H2O is 212 and the freezing point of H2O is 32. So, the difference here is in the Fahrenheit system is 180 degrees. 180 uh, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, in the centigrade Celsius, it started with zero. H2O freezes at zero degrees and boils at 100 degrees. So the difference is 100 degrees. So the difference is here 100 degrees Celsius, correct? And in the Kelvin, is uh, we have started with the freezing point of H2O which is 273.15 Kelvin, the start, and it, uh, H2O boils at 373, and the difference in, this, in, the, in the system is 100 Kelvin, 100 Kelvin. This is 100 centigrade Celsius, this is 100 Kelvin, capital A, capital K, sorry, and here capital F. So capital F with the standard on the top of this here. So this is the, the system here, three type of system we are using. Uh, we are using to measure the temperature, which is really the tool to measure the, the, um, the heat. Let's go uh, further here. Thermal energy, just show you how the, the whole thing, the thermal energy transfer, how the heat moves. Okay, so you can see this radiation up here. 
and here is heat in combustion, the heat is radiated out, and here is the same thing, the heat from the bottom is pushing and the liquid is out. So, illustrate this how thermal energy concept is, is working. And this is the same thing with the sun sending all the radiation through this to through the solar system. So heat transfer and remember that's always the rule. Heat transfers from hot to cold. See, this is hot, hot, okay, and this is cold. One way. One way. So it does not reverse. So heat transfer from hot to cold and never reverse. And we have to really at uh, understand this. So heat will never come from co cold to hot. It's just one way. So, and here just give us that uh, depicting the uh, the uh, ma molecular level as mac versus macroscopical level. Uh, when you start heating the this H2O, you start heating the, H the molecule of H2O. They start spreading out far further from each other. And you can see the thinner here in the color, even a little bit thinner color. So this is the molecules are, are spread out. When you start cooling this, this H2O, the molecules come closer together, correct? At room temperature, this liquid. Molecules are not farther away from each other. When you start freezing, then you see here, you get ice. When you start freezing H2O, you get ice. And you can see how, how dense the molecule H2O to each other, very, very close to each other. And that's just uh, depicting the, 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 three, uh, the three states of, of the matter. We have here uh, gas, correct? Gas, liquid, and solid. So three types of states of matter. Now here is uh, give us the, the idea that the heat transfer from we said from hot to cold, from hot matter to cold matter. Uh, but at the end, that at the end of the transfer, both matters will attain an equilibrium temperature, which will be the same for both. So we have here molecules at high temperature. Here's molecules at high temperature, and here are molecules at lower temperature. The lower will never, you see here, will never come back. They cannot, they cannot go this way. They can't. They are not allowed from cold to high to uh, hot. So the transfer always one way. So they will be from the higher temperature will go through. And then at the end, when, when uh, enough molecules of the uh, higher goes to the cold, the temperature will come uh, to, to start to uh, equilibrium. And we get thermal, they call, we call it thermal equilibrium. And the temperature for both molecules uh, is now is the same. There will be no heat transfer at, uh, uh, by then. Everything had ceased, no transfer by then. Uh, and now let's introduce ourselves the concept of heat change and transfer measurements. We have the heat capacity. Heat capacity is defined as, and here's the definition, is um, uh, heat uh, is the, the energy Q, correct? Absorbed or released, whether exothermic or endothermic, and divided by the, by definition, divided by temperature change. The delta T, as you will see, always we refer delta T, the temperature, delta means Delta means change. Change in temperature means we are looking for the final temperature when the system is attaining uh, uh, attaining uh, uh, thermal equilibrium, the thermal equilibrium, and the initial one is when we start in. This is our initial. So the heat capacity defined as Q, amount of energy absorbed or released divided by the change in temperature the change of temperature is given in centigrade celsius uh, we can use centigrade celsius or uh, use kelvin the si system one kelvin so let's define this the heat capacity of a matter is defined as the heat energy q absorbed or released when the matter is exposed 
to a temperature change of one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. So this is very important. So generally, the heat capacity of a matter is when this, uh, when the heat is absorbed or released, when this matter is exposed to a temperature change of one degree or one Kelvin. So the heat capacity, because it will be extensive property, meaning it really depends on the amount of the matter. Extensive means depends on the amount of the mass. So if I have 250 grams of iron, will be 10 times higher than I uh, used 25 gram of iron. So the heat capacity will be more. Now, as you can see, if we add, if you introduce the mass for this, we will have the specific heat. So specific heat, that will be different. It will be intensive, not extensive, because we added the, uh, the mass and it will be specific heat and the molar heat capacity. Those are the opposite. Those are intensive. They don't depend on the mass uh, on the on the on the amount, mm -hmm. correct? Or the mass of the of, of, of the mass of the matter we use. So let's look at this, and this is very uh, very important here. The specific heat. What is specific heat? Mm -hmm. Specific heat here is uh, Q, amount of energy absorbed or released, mass of the matter, and change in the temperature. So the energy released or, or absorbed equal the mass of the matter being uh, used in the chemical uh, reaction and uh, or the system, the specific heat of the matter and delta T change of temperature. So here we have them here, all of them. So. Let's define the specific heat. The specific heat is defined as the amount of the energy needed to raise the temperature one gram of a matter one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. Correct? Like the, we just, if I can go back and the heat capacity, here it is. The heat capacity we said of the matter is defined the amount of energy released when its matter is exposed to a temperature change of one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. But here now we have introduced introduce our self a mass, correct? And if you look at the back here, you have Q over delta T, no mass. Here now we are introducing the mass inside Q divided by M, M, uh, M multiplied by delta T or Q multiplied equal to mc delta t, correct? This is specific, uh, specific heat here, and is defined as the amount of, of uh, energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram, the mass has to be one gram, matter, one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. The unit of specific heat is, therefore, calorie per gram centigrade Celsius. Or we can use the joule, the joule is, as we said, one, one calorie is 4.184 joules. Will be 4.184 joules per gram centigrade Celsius. As I mentioned before, the, the specific heat is an intensive property of a matter. It does not depend on the amount of the matter itself. Whether I use 100 grams of alum, aluminum or I use uh, just 10 grams of aluminum. The specific heat of aluminum is still 2.2156 calorie per gram centigrade Celsius or 0 0.909 joule per gram centigrade Celsius. And here just give you the, the, the values table general thing. And the, the, the very unique about this general, so you will see that liquids, uh, they have higher values. So if you look at this, liquids and then solids in general if you look here this is 1.76 if i look at the at the uh, joule all of this joule you will see liquids higher than the solids even the metals here metals always they have lower specific heat if i add the co2 gas if i added the gas the gas will be higher than h2o so the the the, the idea is of specific heat you can visualize as retaining the heat so gases they have higher specific heat than liquids. Liquids, they have higher uh, liquids. They have higher than the solids. So the metals, they cannot retain the heat. You heat the metal, 
you put it for a couple minutes it's already cold you heat uh, the liquid it stay for for more or longer time you heat a gas it will stay for hours so that's what the, whole, the table is is telling us so you see the value very small for the metals but the liquid h2o has has almost four times the specific heat amount uh, let's look at the molar heat capacity here. The molar, when we talk about molar, the idea is we have to deal with moles, correct? And this is really true. And we now we have subscript of C, of the heat capacity here, specific heat. We'll add to it N. Instead of M here, correct? Remember? We have M, the specific heat. Now we have molar heat capacity. We use number of moles instead of M. We transfer the, the M into what? Into into number of moles using the molar mass or the atomic mass of the element or, or the compound. So now here the heat is defined as N number of moles multiplied by the molar heat capa uh, capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. Correct? So, and uh, the molar heat capacity again, it will be, uh, it will be intensive the, as, as, as I said. Intensive does not depend on the matter whether I use uh, 10 moles of aluminum or I use uh, I use 10 100 or 10 moles or just one mole the, the the molar heat will remain as is and it never changed so it will be 24 point joule per mole per centigrade Celsius or it will be uh, yeah it will be 24.3 joule per mole or uh, or we can transfer it into calories will be 5.808 calories per mole so whether you have it in joules or in 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 calories if you look at this um uh, the the uh, define uh, the definition of a molar heat capacity is defined as the amount of energy needed now we're not say uh, the grams we're not to the mass to raise the temperature one degree of a mat uh, one uh the, to raise the temperature of one mole see with there in the specific heat we said one gram mass here just one mole just make sure that we understand one degree celsius or one kelvin so the molar heat and specific heat are very closely related we relate this one to one gram and relate heat molar heat with one mole now let's look at some um, examples it's very nice to have uh, more examples to look into them in, in some depth Heat calculation examples. How much heat in kilojoule has uh, has to be removed from um, 250 grams of uh, H2O to lower its temperature from 55 to 25 point centigrade Celsius? So you can see uh, the T initial started with 55. That's the initial one. And you will end up the T final 25 point 25 centigrade Celsius. Set up your equation here, specific heat. You have the mass, correct? Here it is. The specific heat of H2O is given to you. That's always given. One calorie per gram centigrade Celsius. They ask for joules, correct? You don't have to use one calorie. Use instead the joule amount, which is 4.184 joules per gram centigrade Celsius. Set up the amount here, 254 grams. That's the mass. This is the, the uh, that's the, the amount of the, uh, how much uh, heat, Q will be MC delta T. Mass multiplied by the specific heat of uh, H2O, multiplied by delta, um, delta T, T final minus T uh, initial. And if you look like this, uh, uh, if you look uh, like this, T final has to be, this is the final here, and here is, so the answer will come up with negative, which is really an exothermic reaction, but let's just show you where there is no really a negative energies, but the negative means removed or given away. Removed means given away. So it's an exothermic type of, of uh, setup of, uh, of uh, uh, problems here. It's, it's really an exothermic, so removed or given away heat. Let's look at the second, uh, second example. Calculate the mass of uh, H2O that gives heat. Again, that's an, another exothermic reaction. 58 kilojoules when its temperature decreases from 83 
to 13. So it's temperature going from 83, that's initial. Final is 13, correct? You set up the same thing we did in the top. So calculate, but we need the mass now. So you have to work it out. The mass will be cross multiply, correct? C, Q divided by M delta T. Cross multiply, you get mass is the Q divided by C delta T. So C is the specific heat of H2O. We need to use uh, here, we have kilograms, correct? So then we have to use the specific heat in this amount of H2O, 4.184 joule per gram centigrade Celsius. The, the, then we have the uh, Q is given to us in, in kilojoules, but here the specific heat in joules. So we have to convert this one here uh, into joules. So we have to convert this one here into uh, joules. So this one have, so therefore I have to multiply by 1000. That's I have joules now. I take then the uh, divided by the specific heat of H2O and then the difference of the temperature between 83 to 213.50 uh, is 70.00 centigrade Celsius. Now, uh, as I said, this is the final, this is the initial. The answer has to be negative, but we are not interested in the in the, the amount of ne negative here because we have to put the negative to begin with. So this is an exothermic reaction. We are interested in the mass. The mass will be not negative, but we we know that's an exothermic reaction. So it will be we put the the delta delta T is really a positive here, and it will be then the amount will be thousand nine hundred seventy nine. Uh, grams and you have always on those type of reaction to watch out for the sig fix started for sig fix sig fix for sig fix all the way and our answer is for sig fix as well let's look at one of the example here 25.0 gram mercury is heated from this this is your initial this is your final and it and absorbs 455 joules this is an endothermic it's absorbing in taking in so it's taking in this amount of joules correct uh, calculate the specific heat capacity of mercury well the specific heat is q divided energy here divided by the mass uh, multiplied by the, the temperature change uh, you have this one in joule you put this one here q in joule divided by this is the amount of the uh, given to you here. This is the amount here of mercury multiplied by the difference of the temperature. Again, I'm telling you this, this is, the energy will be positive because it's taking in, correct? So it will be 155 minus 25. This is the final, this is the initial. So it will be, the specific heat is 0.14 uh, joule per gram centigrade uh, Celsius, correct? Yeah, so, and as, as you can see, just watch it very well. Three sig fix, two sig fix, three sig fix. So you have to watch for the significant figure. So we'll end up two sig fix as an answer. So what is the specific heat capacity of silver metal? A 55.0 grams of the metal absorb means uh, as another endothermic reaction, 47.3 calories of heat and the temperature uh, rise is 15. So delta T, we don't have, we don't have uh, initial and final, but we have the delta T value here. And we have the mass, correct? And we have Q. So just set up the whole thing. Specific heat Q, M multiplied by delta T. Q is in calories. The mass divided by the mass, correct, given to us divided by the 15.0, this is the delta T. And as you can see, this is uh, a sig fix. We have three sig fix and it came out to be specific heat in three sig fix. Um, another example here, if sample of chloroform is initially uh, at 25 degrees, what is the final temperature if now we have, that's the mass, this is T uh, initial, and this is amount of, of, uh, of what? Of Q in kilojoules, watch out. And the specific heat of chloroform in joules. So whenever you have joules and kilojoules, this one has to be transferred into, uh, this one has to be 
has to be uh, has to be uh, uh, converted into joules immediately. So you have to transfer this one in joules because the the specific heat here is in joule per gram centigrade Celsius. So set up set up the whole thing and uh, what is really asked here what is the final temperature we are looking after the final temperature so set up everything as as usual delta t here we are looking for delta t now delta t is q divided by mc we converted this one here this is the q we converted into joules multiplied by 1000 correct divided by the mass which is here there's the mass here here's the mass and and the, and the, the, the mass multiplied by the specific heat this is the specific heat which is here correct so you divide the the q over the product of the mass and delta t uh, delta mass with the specific heat to get delta t delta t is t final minus t initial correct so it came out to be after after calculation the whole the whole thing here it came out to be bo uh, uh, point zero four four centigrade cel uh, Celsius, so about six degrees. Six degrees T final minus twenty five. Correct. So you have to move the twenty five to the to six to get the T final by itself isolated. The T final will be then twenty five plus six thirty one point nine. Okay, thirty one point. Uh, nine. Okay, so calorimetry. The calorimetry concept is a method or a tool which the heat transfer, uh, which really measuring at the end the heat transfer into and outside the, the system during the chemical reaction. So we are we are using this uh, calorimetry as a as a tool to measure really the, the heat. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can we can use this one here during combustion reaction, correct? And we can use it for a transfer reaction, correct? So in this process, the heat transfer is calibrated with calibrated object. The temperature change in the process is used to calculate the heat transfer. Uh, the calculation is needed to, to be specific, based on surrounding and system definitions. System. What is the system? The system is the chemical compound, and uh, undergo is undergoing chemical reaction. What is the surrounding? The surrounding the kilometer itself, with all its component, with all its component, including the equipment that measures the heat. Correct. So the system is the chemical the chemical compound, and the surrounding is the kilometer uh, equipment with all the component included. The the uh, in the in the in the experiment so calorimeter is a tool as i said or equipment used to measure uh to measure calorimetry is the noun calorimetry is the noun calorimeter is the 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 uh, the, the subject the, the the tool itself calorimetry is the concept of measuring of measurement but the calorimeter is the tool and equipment used to measure the heat absorbed or temperature will decrease or given away whether it is is it exothermic or endothermic reaction we can with the help of the calorimeter measure this amount of heat uh, given off as in the exothermic reaction or taken in in the endothermic reaction there are uh, two types um, two major types of calorimeter adiabatic and reaction calorimeters correct uh, there are two types of this and adiabatic as you can see means there is no heat change so this type of calorimeter are, are worked to measure the enthalpy change in a system during physical process such as crystallization mixing dilution uh, dilution so there is no change there is not really a this is like a more more or less physical reaction not chemical reaction because there is no uh, change in the in the heat so you can see there is, uh, the, these calorimeters do not exchange heat with the surrounding and function at the zero heat exchange conditions are known as adiabatic condition adiabatic conditions means there is zero heat exchange That's the heat will be not exchanged during the process 
here is an example of a picture of adiabatic uh, calorimeter you see how complex that that really is so to make sure that the heat is not uh, exchanged uh, with the surrounding the reaction calorimeter those the most used most ex uh, intensive used um, in the industry in the research in the uh, undergraduate labs the reaction uh, uh, calorimeters uh, they have several types available in the market and uh, we can look at some of the uh, major four four ones according to their function we have heat flow we have heat balance we have constant flux calorimeter we have power compensation calorimeter so you can see that's that's those the four major one under the umbrella of uh, reaction calorimeter which is the most in intensively used in the research and in the uh, in the undergraduate teaching so let's look at the one of the heat flow when we have heat flow calorimeter examples so the heat flow we we use this one as in our undergraduate uh, for our undergraduate uh, experiment we use just a simple foam cup a very simple confab, a foam cup like a coffee cup as a calorimeter it's uh, it's not bad it it's big, bring us a very reasonable error but then at the end it's not very accurate you can use it for research correct just for teaching uh, purposes we can use the 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 coffee cup or the foam cup calorimeter um, we can see the picture in 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 in, uh, in few seconds here uh, what we have we have really a cup and we have a thermometer and we have water inside let me go and uh, go ahead and uh, explain to this this is the really the cup of the tea of cup of coffee here we just put what we are doing in this we put uh, h2o water inside and we have to know the exact amount of the h2o suppose we put say with a small cup like this say 20 20 milliliters the density of h2o is one so we have 20 grams of h2o correct at the side we can boil here another experiment you can boil a metal up to 50 60 degrees correct so we can we have to measure what's the initial temperature of this uh, 10 grams of uh, h2o correct we know the initial temperature of h2o we take the thermometer a little bit out and then the lid out and then we insert the metal inside here the hot metal not with our hands with the with the tongs crucible tongs we dump the metal inside and the metal is about 50 to 60 degrees so what's happened is and then we put the thermometer inside we thermometer with it inside and you see the temperature will go up 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 until it's uh, you know uh, attaining the thermal equilibrium and it stops and then we record this temperature as a final temperature here the good thing here we don't have to go outside to to heat the the uh, uh, the the metal itself we know the metal uh, i have to weigh the metal too i need the, to know the mass of the metal and the mass of h2o here's h2o how many milliliters i know it's uh, it's mass and i don't have to go out i can put the metal somewhere here at the bottom okay and then i can i can just uh, before heating i can the initial temperature of h2o how many grams of h2o using the density and then I can heat the metal up to 50 degrees, correct? Uh, although I'm not, I, I will, uh, if you heat the temperature, the, wat the water will be heated as well. So it's better to have the metal outside heated and you dump it in, correct? When you dump the metal above 60 to 50 degrees in, you watch the temperature for recording the, after thermal uh, equilibrium. That will be your final temperature and you would then the formula we can see the formula here uh, later on I'll, I'll show you the formula to how to calculate the specific heat of that metal the pump uh, the pump calorimeter is the same idea like the foam cup except it's more sophisticated the same thing it's more sophisticated a little bit but the same idea we have the sample here look at the sample here okay this is the container of the sample this is two walls together stainless steel to give the temperature not to escape 
double double walls of uh, stainless steel here so what will happen at the beginning at the beginning we have the samples connected to to ignition box we uh, we heat the uh, we heat the, the sample here i mean we ignite the sample the sample is combusted there's a combustion reaction when it's combusted then the heat will go from from this sample into heating what the water bath here with the help of the stirrer keep the temperature through the water bath evenly and the temperature of course will go up we know the initial temperature we started with just a thermometer digital thermometer here we started with how much we started with and then when we ignite the temperature so exothermic reaction combustion is exothermic reaction the heat will be given off to the uh, to uh, to warm up the h2o and then we monitor the amount of of h2o to determine the final temperature and we can make our calculations the same like the foam but a little bit more fancy and it has the purpose of of combustion here combustion in the in the foam we don't have a combustion reaction we have just a physical you know displacement is it will come the metal will come inside the water there's no re reaction at all although we can do a reaction in the side the foam we can do titration acid base we can determine the heat of mineralization for example using the coffee cup so let's go further and look uh, other ones we have differential scanning calorimeter that's a very fancy one very nice and a very unique uh, ones it's used to determine to test the physical properties plastic and polymers and monomers so it's you're not going to find it every everywhere and that's expensive than the than the than the other ones so this calorimeter deals with the thermal analysis te technique research and quality uh, control the calorimeter monitors product analysis at different range of temperature and heat cha changes which facilitate the study of the chemical properties of the sample within its heat capacity so it's very fancy one but it's very good one the solution calorimeter here uh, this is another one a very simple one it's not very expensive um, it's just uh, this one here we can determine the heat of solution or the heat of ne uh, neutralization like acid based neutralization so we have here this type of uh, solution calorimeter is used to measure the heat of solution by dissolving solid inside liquid also you can uh, call this one here heat of dilution okay uh, by dissolving liquid inside another another liquid so so we can we can use this one here okay but the same the same symbol the same symbol. you have to know what's the starting temperature you put them together to mix and you wait until the temperature is come to the final temperature no change the crt final and you know the masses you started with of the two components you know you mix and you can determine then the the heat specific heat of whatever the desired compound let's look further here the heat of solution the heat of dilution the heat of neutralization all this as well as specific heat calculations using heat flow parameters we will, we want to go through this and look at these calculations how the whole thing is is uh, really going on so it turns out to be the uh, temperature is followed till there is no rise as i said of the temperature we are attaining what a thermal equilibrium the equilibrium temperature of the system is attained that's very important the general formula is the thermal equilibrium at the end of the reaction or solution or dilution is this so we have a thermal now equilibrium so meaning the heat of the compound a plus the heat of compound b is equal zero so the heat is lost by a equal the heat gained by b or vice versa whatever that ma the might be so maybe the heat gained by a okay is minus the heat uh, 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 lost by b and so on correct as in our example here heat lost by a equal negative heat gained by b and here is this because the heat in our system here 
heat flows from A to B. Heat flows from A to B. If the heat flow from B to A, that will be reversed, as I mentioned. So let's look at this example, which is very, um, very interesting here. A heat transfer or exchange between two substances. Heat transfer or exchange between two substances, similar to the foam cup calorimeter, correct? So let's do whatever is given to us. A piece of paper and you write all whatever is given to you. A piece of metal weighing, this is the mass of the metal in grams, was heated to 100 centigrade Celsius. This is the T metal, correct? The initial temperature of the metal. And it put in 100 ml of H2O, which has T initial 23 of the H2O. Now, 100 ml means you have to use the density of H2O is 1 gram per ml. So 100 ml of H2O, the mass of H2O is 100, uh, 100 uh, gram, correct? The metal and the, uh, and the H2O were allowed to come to an equilibrium temperature, which is T final, 27.8 centigrade Celsius. Assuming no heat loss or, or to the environment, calculate the specific heat of the metal. Well, here it is, the same thing. Heat is lost by the metal, and heat is gained by H2O. Here's the negative. So, the mass of the metal, you have to use the mass of the metal, multiplied by specific metal, multiplied by delta T of the metal. Negative, mass of the H2O, specific heat of H2O, delta T of H2O. Just plug all those numbers inside. What's the mass of H2O? Is this. Specific, this one we don't know. This is circle. We don't know. That's what we are solving for. Now, the uh, what's the final temperature? Uh, this one has to be, I mean, this has to be, this is the final minus the initial. But it does not matter because we have to get rid of the negative. That's the whole idea. So, 27.8 minus 100. That should be like this. But I can tell you that it will be no effect on, on our calculation. So minus 100 ml, correct, H2O. This is to convert the milliliter 100 into grams by using the density of H2O being 1 gram per ml. This is the specific heat of H2O. This is T final minus T initial for H2O. And this one has to be the same. This one has to be the same. Then we get rid of the negative, correct? The negative will be out if we put this one reversed. If we reverse this one here, correct? So we reverse those numbers, 27 minus final minus initial, and they take the negative, the negative will be taken out. But anyway, at any rate, uh, we have all this here cal calculated, correct? We are calculating 100 minus 27, multiplied by this amount, correct? And we calculated the whole thing here, and it turns out to be this amount. And the C metal will be this amount here, divided by, by this amount, correct? And the answer is 0.4 uh, Joule per gram centigrade uh, uh, Celsius. So it's Joule by centigram uh, Celsius. So um, let's go for another example. In a coffee cup calorimeter, 100 gram of H2O and 100 ml of HCl are mixed, correct? This is dilution. This is dilution, uh, heat, are mixed. The HCl had um, an initial temperature of 44.6 centigrade Celsius, and the water was originally at 24.0 centigrade Celsius. This is T initial, correct? And the the water for the water, correct? And the THCl, the initial of H, HCl temperature is this. When we mix them together, dilute them, dilute HCl, the final temperature is this. And we have 100 gram of H2O and 100 ml of HCl. Now, just put them together, same thing. And uh, here it is. The water is endothermic. I said, what is the reaction? Uh, was the reaction exothermic or endothermic? Where for H2O, correct, 
the the overall reaction is uh, dilution of HCl will be exothermic, correct? Will be exothermic. But H2O here, temperature increase from 24 to to this. So temperature indicating the energy is absorbed by H2O. HCl is exothermic. That's what I said. Dilution of HCl is exothermic. Why? Because the temperature dropped from 44.6 to 31.3 correct now we calculate how much heat of the water lost or gained it turns out to be the mass of h2o which is 100 grams the specific heat of h2o is 4.148 joule per gram centigrade celsius and the temperature is 31 point minus 24 centigrade celsius correct 31 minus 24 and it came out to be positive and this is endothermic for h2o but the overall reaction the dilution or solution uh heat is is will be will be negative yeah will be negative uh when we consider the hcl so let's go further here uh what is the final temperature yeah what is the final tem temperature after um, after 840 uh, joules is absorbed by 10 grams of H2O at 25 point centigrade Celsius. What is the final temperature after we have 840 joules absorbed by 100 gram of H2O? Well, we have to put all this together here. QH2O mass multiplied by specific heat of H2O multiplied by delta T of H2O. We have the Q here, the amount of energy absorbed is here the mass of h2 is here is um specific it is here delta t of h2 we have to calculate it first which is t final minus t initial correct and this is our t initial so then you'll have t, t the whole thing came out to be 21 which is equal to T final minus T initial, correct? So, this is 25. This is how much? 25. And the whole, the whole thing is, the whole thing is, the whole thing is 21. So, the T final, you have to move this one here, the other side. Here it is. And the answer is 41, 45.1 centigrade Celsius. Let's look at this example. A uh, 0.88 gram uh, gummy bear is burned in, in the uh, bump calorimeter. The temperature started at, this is the initial temperature of the gummy bar. Uh, and it's uh, then ended up thermal equilibrium temperature is 24. That's the T final. Correct? The manufacturer of the of the bump calorimeter determined the heat capacity of the calorimeter to be 111.4 kilojoule per kilojoule. Correct. Calculate the heat of combustion per gram of gem, of, of gummy uh, bear. So, the experiment is done for us. Correct. The experiment is done for us. So, the specific heat of the calorimeter here is so Q is C. Of the calorimeter multiplied by t correct so now we have this is the calorimeter uh, specific uh, uh, heat or we call it specific or capacity of the calorimeter specific heat of uh, calorimeter this one here and you multiply it by the delta t which is t final minus t initial and you'll end up having 30.78 kilojoules now you have 0.88 grams. You take this, you divide it by the grams. Here it is. Can you see it? And you will end up having the answer of 34.98 kilojoule per gram uh, gummy bear. Let's go further. A piece of a metal weighing 85.5 grams was heated to 100 centigrade Celsius. So the piece of the metal the mass of it is this is the mass and this is heated to this correct 
that's the initial temperature of what of the metal before inserting before inserting it into into h2o and it put into 100 milliliter that's 100 grams because the density of h2o is one gram per mil so you have to transfer the melts into 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 grams of h2o initially that's the temperature initial temperature for h2o the metal and wire were allowed to come to an thermal equilibrium calculate the final temperature if the specific heat of the piece of the metal is this so this is straightforward we did this one before so we need to get delta t of of the uh, delta t we need to get delta t from the delta t of the system we have the initial temperatures we can calculate the t final so let's put it this this one here mass uh, or heat is lost by the metal equal minus heat is gained by the by h2o so multiply the mass of the metal multiply by specific heat of the metal multiply by delta t of the metal uh, mass of h uh, of the h2o multiply by specific heat of h uh, h2o multiplied by delta h2o now let's go and look uh, step by step so that's the mass of the metal that's the specific heat of the metal this one here t final we don't know t final leave it like this but t initial of the metal yes we know the t initial of the metal is 100 correct this we know 100 this is the mass of the of the of the uh, of the met of the h2o we have to convert using the density here convert it into grams will be 100 ml 100 grams multiply by the specific heat of h2o correct and then the t final we don't know but we know the t initial of h2o which is 37 23.7 correct let's put all the numbers inside together and uh, we multiply multiply those together and this will be t, t final minus 100 so we will multiply those together here does give us this value here t final minus 100 centigrade celsius equal to uh, of course negative 4.184 after multiplying this by 100 correct and multiplying by t final minus 23.7 centigrade celsius now you have t final twice so we have t final here and t final the other side left hand side we have t final so we have to set up this whole thing together multiply 29.95 with this amount here to open up this and multiply this one here with the whole thing here to open it up so when we open the whole thing look what we got here we got that's what we got here we get 29.925 t final plus 4.184 t final equal to 23.7 plus 2,992.5. So from out of this here, you can calculate the t final, just a normal algebra here, and the t final will be 6.73. So it's not that much uh, was risen, but it's about, about 7 degrees when you make insert them the metal inside h2o so let's go further i have another example here um, uh, point, point 0.258 gram of potassium nitrate solid is placed in h2o inside a coffee cup carometer resulting in a vigorous re reaction assume a total volume of 100 ml the total volume uh, for resulting solution we assume that the, the solution is has a density of h2o correct so the solution is mostly made of the solvent h2o so for resulting solution the temperature of the solution changes from t initial to t final due to the reaction how much heat is generated per gram of potassium uh, for this reaction assume the density as i said we have, that's my assumption all the time all the time not in this because you have a solution and the solvent is h2o you assume that the solvent uh, the solution is has the density of h2o and that's really true because the solid is dissolved and the solution is is mostly is 
is aqueous and therefore is having the density uh, ha will have the density of H2O. So this is the density of H2O and the capacity of the solution reaction of a cell is only due to the water that has so we assume the specific heat of the system here of the uh, of the uh, dissolving of the, the of the solution is has the same density of H2O and the same specific heat of H2O just um, not this is it should be not the metal this is potassium nitrate solid this is, has to be solid that's not the metal and you put the same old you know the same old uh, uh, formula and here it is mass multiplied by C solution multiplied by T solution correct the mass of the solution the mass of the solution is you have to be uh, careful here uh, the mass of the solution is 100 gram this is the specific heat of the solution and this is the the uh, the uh, delta t now we have we assume the total volume of the solution 100 mls so 100 mls is we're assuming the density is one is 100 grams so we came up with this this amount correct now this is this is what what we have here and uh, this is uh, 127 nine uh, hundred twenty-seven nine a hundred a thousand two hundred ninety-seven uh, uh, joules. Correct. Now, with this here amount, we have to relate this one to the amount here we have. Correct. So we'll take this one here, the joules we have calculated, divided by the amount 0.258 grams of the potassium nitrate, and we end up dividing this amount here. If you look. We divided this amount here together and we get uh, 5,027 um, 5, joules per gram potassium nitrate. Let's look at another example. Here we have neutralization, uh, 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 neutralization reaction and the heat coming out neutralization of HCl. And this is the amount of HCl. This is the molar and this is the amount, the volume of it molarity of it and and the volume of it with 30 mls of um, with 30 mls of uh, uh, I think neutralized with 30 mls of a base which assume the base is sodium hydroxide yes sodium hydroxide is not written here but it's just in the reaction given sodium hydroxide is 30 mls with the molarity of 0.25 Correct. The initial temperature is this, and the uh, then uh, the system is allowed to to go to the thermal equilibrium, and the final temperature is this. Calculate the heat of neutralization reaction, and this is very very fancy to know how much if I mix this amount of acid with this amount of base to get the heat of the uh, neutralization. How much heat I will generate? So the same idea we did. The heat of neutralization, the heat of solution, the heat of reaction, they are, they are the same thing. They are the same thing. It's a reaction because sodium hydroxide reacted with gel. This is neutralization type of reaction. And this is solution as well. So this is the same thing. And we, do the, we just plug in our old formula. Mass multiplied by specific heat of solution multiplied by delta T. Now. What is the, uh, the specific heat of the solution? Well, it turns out to be here, assume the specific heat of the reaction equal the specific heat of H2O. The same thing, this will come with us every time and then, every time, because those are solutions, HCl sol solution and sodium hydroxide solution. Here it is, aqueous, aqueous, aqueous. And therefore we can, very safe to assume that the specific heat is the specific heat of the of the of the whole solutions of the whole solution here is equal to the specific heat of H2O. Furthermore, the density will be assumed to be what the density of H2O. Correct. That makes our life easy. The only thing we have to watch here, the volume. Here we are dealing with total volume. Correct. Total mass. So here it is the the here it is 25 mls of HCl and 30 mls of uh, sodium hydroxide. 
So that's we have to watch out for that, the mass. So the mass is 55, 30 plus 25 is 55 multiplied by the density of H2O. The mass is 50, uh, 55 grams. Delta T, uh, we know the, the 26.5, this is the final, minus initial 23.5 is 3. So then put the whole thing together, the heat of solution or heat of neutralization or heat of reaction is 55, the mass multiplied by specific heat of, of the solution, which is specific heat of H2O, multiplied by delta T will end up with 690 joules. Let's go further. Um, 1.5 kilogram block of uh, nickel at 100 centigrade Celsius is placed into 500 ml of H2O, correct? So we have a block of nickel, metal nickel, uh, its mass is 1.5 kilogram, and we have to watch because specific heat are always in grams. So we have to watch for the kilograms here. And this is the initial temperature of this metal. Placed in 100 ml of H2O. Temperature, initial temperature is of H2O 21. What is the final temperature assuming specific heat of nickel, of nickel is 0.4 4 joule gram centigrade Celsius? And the H2O specific heat we know by now is 4.1484 joule centigrade Celsius. So, and here I give you the hint, the total heat loss is equal to the total heat gain. The total heat loss is equal to the total heat gain. So, let's look at this. The heat loss by nickel is the heat gained by H2O, correct? Q metal minus equal minus Q water. So, mass of the H2O, so we have to transfer the kilogram, as I said in the beginning, into grams. We did here. So, transfer this 1.5, that's 1,500 grams, multiplied by specific heat of nickel, multiplied by the um, the T initial minus T final. We did, we did it. So, here it has to be really T final minus T, but the minus here. So, we don't have the minus here. So, we can allow us to put this one like this way. Correct? Just to show you this. There is a negative here. I here, here, there is a negative. There's a negative, but I took the negative out, but I switch 100 centigrade minus T final. Here is the mass of H2O, 500 ml, correct? And the density is one gram per ml, so the 500 grams, the specific heat of H2O. T final minus the initial of temperature of H2O is given to me as 21, correct? 21, the initial. And here's the T final. When you do that, the same thing we do the arrangement, you see this the T final is 40 degrees centigrade Celsius.